today I'm going to show you exactly where to put your money step by step once you get paid. Most people don't even get past the first couple of steps, but if you follow all eight of these steps, you will find yourself in a much better financial position. Hit that like button and let's get started. So the first place your money needs to go to is a 401k. This is where a portion of your paycheck is taken out before you even see it and it's put into a retirement account or plan, which in this case is the 401k. This is especially good if your employer does a match. This is literally just free money from your employer and they will put money into your retirement account because you're putting money into it and they might match every dollar or half dollar you put up to a certain amount. So make sure to max out your 401k to get as much free money as possible from your employer. If you live outside the USA, you should have a similar version of this tax advantage account where you can put a portion of your paycheck before you get it into some sort of retirement fund before the money even hits your account. And for the people that are self-employed, you can open a solo 401k or a SEP IRA and they work just like a typical 401k except since you are employing yourself, there is no free match and there are some other differences between a SEP IRA and a solo 401k which you can look into yourself. I would try to put 10 to 15% of your income here if you can. The next place your money will go to is your checking account. This is where all of your income comes in and where all your bills are paid from. If you don't already have a checking account, it's really easy to open one at a physical bank or even an online bank. Make sure you set up direct deposit, which is when your employer directly transfers your paycheck to your account. This way you won't have to go through the hassles of dealing with the physical check and depositing it through an ATM or whatever it is. The third place your money should go to is your needs. This is the bare minimum you need in your current situation to survive. This includes paying for rent, food, healthcare, and all that good stuff. Um, this also includes the minimum payments that you need for your credit cards, your car loan, or any other loans that you might have. Those minimum debt payments are considered needs because if you don't pay those, they will ruin your credit score and we can't have that. Remember, there is a key difference between needs and wants. To clarify, needs are something you can't go without while wants are something you can go without. Um, do you have to get McDonald's for lunch every day or can you find a way to make lunch at home and bring it with you every day, right? That's usually healthier and cheaper. So that might that's one example. And another one is, do you have to buy Starbucks every morning or can you buy a coffee machine for home and lower the cost significantly per cup? In these cases, like the McDonald's and Starbucks are not a need, but if you need them to be happy and productive, then maybe you can budget this in and still be fine. It all really comes down to budgeting and planning um, because without a plan, you don't know where your money is going and you will just be wandering around living paycheck to paycheck. And then you'll wonder where did your money go, right? Uh, that's the case with most people and that's exactly what we are trying to avoid. This portion will take up a big chunk of income for most people, probably around 50%. The next step is to put your money into an emergency fund. This is super important and everyone needs to have one. Um, this is what you use in case of emergencies and it will lower your financial stress tremendously. I suggest using a high yield savings account for this since they offer more interest than regular savings accounts. A lot of online banks like Ally offer these types of high yield savings accounts. You should aim to put three to six months of expenses um, into this account. So if you lose your job or you get into an accident or something happens that prevents you from making money, you will have a nice cushion until things get back to normal. Depending on your expenses, this might be depositing money into this account until you have $3,000 or until you have $30,000. If you have more income and expenses, then you will obviously need to have more saved up. I suggest setting up automatic deposits into this account so you don't even have to think about it. The next place is going to be your Roth IRA. This this is a tax advantage retirement account that will help you save for retirement tax free. With this account, you will be able to avoid paying long term capital gains tax. You can look into this more, but I talk about this in a bunch of my other videos. Um, if you live outside the USA, you should have a similar version of this tax advantage account where you will be able to avoid paying capital gains tax. I have a Roth IRA with M1 Finance, so I highly recommend them. Fidelity is also great, which is what my parents use. Accounts like the Roth IRA are so good that the government puts a limit on how much you can put into it every year. The 2021 limit is $6,000, so uh, you should definitely max this out as soon as possible. But again, I suggest automating it. Um, you can set up an automatic $500 deposit into this every month. Remember, you have to invest that money once you put it into the account. Just depositing the money and letting it sit there isn't enough. A lot of people think that you just have to put money into the account and it'll start growing by itself. 
No, that is not true. Uh, you have to go in there and actually invest. I suggest investing in some sort of index fund or ETF. Uh, VOO and VTI are my top two. They have had great returns historically and they also have low cost and are very low risk. Once you have all that, you want to consider paying off more debt. This might be making an extra $100 payment towards your car loan and um, or paying off your credit cards, right? And here are two simple strategies that you can use to pay off debt faster. First is the snowball method, which I learned from Dang Ramsey. Uh, this is where you start by paying off your smallest debt and then moving on to the next smallest debt and then so on until you have paid off all of your debt. It's really messy and discouraging when you have a bunch of different accounts and a bunch of payments to make every month. Um, but uh, with this strategy, you'll be able to kind of pay off these small accounts and you'll see less and less accounts that need to be paid off. So you'll be a lot more motivated to keep going. It's like a big debt snowball, hence the snowball method. Second is the avalanche method. This is similar to the one before, but instead of tackling the smallest debts first, you will tackle the debts with the highest interest rates. So if you have an option between making an extra payment on your credit card or your car loan, you'd probably want to choose the credit card because usually they have the highest interest rate of around 20% while an auto loan might only have a 5%, right? Depending on um, your credit and your history. Uh, so that's the avalanche method. Um, you can use either one to kind of start paying off your debts faster. The seventh place to put your money is in your wants. Now that you've taken care of your financial priorities, uh, this is when you can spend money on nice things like expensive food, right? Or some clothes that you don't really need. Um, this could also mean putting more money into savings for that nice car you want, um, but don't need, or for a vacation trip that you've been wanting to take. Anything you wanna spend money on, even if it doesn't make financially sense, you can do with this extra money. Like, yes, you do need to be smart with your money, but you also need to enjoy life and spend on things that make you happy. The best thing about this is you can actually relax about spending this money because everything else has been taken care of, right? You have been budgeting, you're financially smart, you have nothing to worry about because you have paid your bills and you are you know, saving and you're investing and uh, you're being financially disciplined and smart. So, you know, you do deserve to treat yourself as well. If you still have money left after all that, then you can either just put it in a savings account for um, your goals, such as for a down payment on a house or to you know save for that business that you've been wanting to start um, or to just build a six to 12 month cushion because you're planning on leaving your job and uh, starting that business, right? So this is where this money comes in and uh, one option is to just save. You can also open a regular brokerage account and make more investments. Remember the gains in this account will be taxable unlike your Roth IRA account. Um, this doesn't just have to be you know to invest in stocks, you can also invest in crypto and real estate through uh, REITs or something, right? Um, I have more videos on all this stuff if you like. Remember, you want to use all this extra money to build more wealth instead of wasting it or to work towards something that will build you more wealth. So let's say you do all this and you get in routine, um, right? And then you get a raise. Now you have even more money to do things with. But remember, it's not just extra money for you to waste. You want to make that money work for you. So don't increase your expenses freely. Don't go out and buy a new car or whatever it might be. If you do that, you're inflating your lifestyle and lifestyle inflation is a big no-no and that's what keeps people from getting wealthy. That's why people that are making uh, $200,000 are in as just as much debt as somebody making $100,000. So let's do a quick review of where to put your money. When you get paid, you first put some of your money into a 401k. You will then get all of your money in a checking account and uh, from there, you'll wanna figure out how much you'll need for your necessities, for what you need to survive, and for the minimum payments you need to make on your debt. From there, you can set up automatic monthly transfers to your emergency fund and Roth IRA. After that, you wanna consider paying off debt using the snowball or avalanche method. Um, then you'll be able to spend the rest of your money on your wants, stuff that you can live without, but you know stuff that will make you happy. And if you still have money left, even after that, you might wanna consider investing it or saving for something that can potentially make you more money in the future. Remember, tracking your money and sticking with your budget is the best way to get good with money and to become wealthy. I highly recommend doing this, following all the steps, and uh, yeah, that'll be all for today. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell besides it because I post new videos every week. And if you want, go get up to $250 in free Bitcoin with my BlockFi link down below. You can also get free stocks using my other links. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.